Yo, what's up YouTube? It's Anthony from CompSize Studio and welcome back to your 26th Java programming tutorial. So before we start this tutorial, I'd just like to say congratulations for getting through these 25 tutorials so far. Um, thanks for watching them. It means so much to me. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It just makes me want to do even more tutorials. Um, I really enjoy doing this actually. Uh, I didn't know this until I started doing it. so. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching so far, and let's get into this tutorial. So today we're going to be learning about access modifiers. I talked a little bit about them before when we were learning uh, about this public uh, about methods. Um, all an access modifier is the this thing right here, public, and there's two other ones. But we're only going to be going over the public access modifier and the private access modifier since they're the main ones that we're going to be using. I barely ever use protected because, I don't know, I just don't use it much. I just use public and private. So yeah, let's jump right into it and I'll show you guys what they do. So if you guys haven't made a cl another class already, just go right click, make a new class and name it and all that stuff. And uh, you should get something like this. So in here, I'm just gonna make a variable with public access. So to do that, all you have to do is say public um, and then we could call it a string, well not call it a string, we're going to make a string variable and we're going to set it, uh, the variable name and then we're going to set it equal to, actually we'll set it equal to comp size studio because comp size studio is boss. Let's see if I spelled that right, yep there we go. Um, so yeah we have a public string name and we set it equal to comp size studio. So with this public string, we can access it from anywhere in our program. So this pack, this class over here can access it no problem. But if we made a private string and we called it a private name, um, we'll call it beaver. No, let's call it beaver. So there we go, um, private name. If we uh, tried to access this in the other class, we wouldn't be able to because it has private access. And um, public access can be accessed anywhere within your program. Private can only be accessed within the class it was created. Um, so that's basically the simple little answer there. And yeah, let's just access it right now. Let's just show them that I'm not lying. So we need to make an object of our tomatoes class. So we'll just do that. There we go. So once we got that made, if we print out uh, so we get print out t dot name, and I did it again. Wow. Oh gosh. Public static Anthony static. There we go. So you got to make static um, strings because we're accessing it from a static method, and you got to make a static object because we're accessing it from a static method. Oh my gosh. Okay, I will never get a hang of this, honestly. It's not gonna happen, guys, so bear with me. <laughs> um, so yeah, if we ran this right now, we're gonna get comp size studio. But if we tried to access this private name, so if we just so t dot private name, as you can see, we're already getting red under lines. It's saying private name has private access in YouTube tutorials uh, dot tomatoes. So it's basically saying, okay, you labeled this variable as private in the tomatoes class. You can only use it in the tomatoes class. Now, um, there's actually a way to get around this. Uh, I'm probably going to, yeah, I'm going to teach you that in the next tutorial. We've already done it. It's actually back in our uh, methods tutorial where we made getters and setters. Uh, that's the only way of getting around it. So if we make a method that returns this private variable, um, we could access it in another class even though it's private that's usually what you do that's just called good programming practice um, you make private variables and if you want to access them in another class you make a getter method so I'm gonna teach you guys in the next tutorial about getters and setters uh, even though I already taught you guys but not officially so yeah so as you can see we're getting an error there so we can't use that unless we use our getter and setter and I'm gonna show you guys in the next tutorial so don't delete your code um, I'm going to use this exact same code and I'm just going to make a getter and setter to be able to print it out into the next tutorial. 
So thanks a lot guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.